Hey everyone, my name is Lisa Knowles and my company is Neutrality. Um, and I'm here today to um, give you some hints and tips on sleep. But before that, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in the world of spa and wellness for um, quite a number of years. Um, I originally trained as a beauty therapist, aromatherapist and a reflexologist and also went on to be a lecturer. But I also started my spa consultancy company um, over 20 years ago. And um, during that time, I was traveling a lot, flying, driving all around the country, and it started to take its toll on my health. I started to put on a lot of weight. I become very lethargic. Um, my hormones were all over the place. Um, pretty awful stuff. And, and just felt that I needed to do something about it. So I gave myself an overhaul. I changed my diet, I changed my lifestyle, I added some supplements, um, I managed to get my hormones back on track, I lost weight and just got healthier, fitter, um, and stopped feeling so tired. And all my habits that I had of eating on the run, I changed. But during that time, I thought, well, if I can do this for myself, then I can do that for others. So I decided that I'm trying to be a nutrition therapist. And that's when Nutriality was born. And Nutriality is actually made up of two words, and that is nutrition and reality. And that's the reality of good nutrition. So I'm hoping today that with some of the advice I can, can give you, um, you'll hopefully be able to get um, a little bit healthier. So we're going to talk about sleep. Um, now, more than ever with what's going on in the world, um, I think our sleep patterns have been affected for a number of reasons. Um, whether it's something you've always had an issue with and it's got worse or it's just developed during um, the, the lockdown periods that we have. Um, so I'm going to give you some hints and tips today that hopefully can improve your sleep pattern. I work with a number of clients as um, a practitioner that have exactly these issues and are finding that they're not sleeping, they're getting up throughout the night. Um, but just through changing a few little habits, they've found that their sleep has improved, they're getting longer nights sleep or they're managing to sleep all the way through. Um, and even they've stopped getting up in, in the middle of the night. Um, so we're going to start off talking about sleep. I'm just going to share a screen with you. So here we are. Oh, sorry. So sleep, um, absolutely love this picture um, because isn't that how we would all like to be, to be able to sleep like a baby or just sleep anywhere like that koala bear, that would just be so great. Um, but unfortunately, this is quite often what happens. We just can't sleep or find you're sleeping at the wrong time of, of the day, you're sleeping in the mi middle of the day because you're just not getting enough sleep um, of an evening. Um, so these are my top tips of um, how um, I've improved my sleep over the years and how my clients have um, improved their sleeping patterns as well. So first one, get enough sunlight during the day. I know that might seem a little bit difficult being as um, we are in the, in the winter period, but there is sunlight, um, there is daylight. We have periods of, of that. Um, now we are told that we can go out and exercise. So if you can get outside, even if it is in the garden, you need to get out there. And the reason being is when we go outside, sunlight actually creates something called serotonin. Serotonin is what we know as our happy hormone. This is what makes us actually feel good. So the sunlight hits our eyes and that does actually build up serotonin. 
Now, serotonin is actually linked to something called melatonin. And melatonin um, is what we produce at night um, when, it, when it starts to go dark. Um, and as the sunlight goes down, and once you're in a, a darkened room, we produce melatonin. And it is melatonin that actually makes us sleep. But it is literally daylight and nighttime that really does help us sleep. So if you have been indoors all day, with just artificial light and some light coming through the window, it's not enough. You need to be building up that serotonin to help to build up your stores of melatonin. So get outside. It also will make you feel much, much better, much brighter in yourself to, to get outside. So sleep is all about daylight and nighttime. It's, it's not just about going to, to sleep at night so that's my first top tip um, then of an evening it's about reducing those stimulating activities um, including food so stimulating activities um, could be exercise so if you are somebody that exercises um, you really do need to stop that activity, that exercise, round about four hours before it's bedtime. And the reason being is if you are too active, your adrenaline is too active, you do not switch off, you do not start to, to calm down. So if you are someone that's exercising, you really shouldn't be doing high energy exercise before you, you go to bed. So start to reduce that. Other activities, um, watching a stimulating film just before you go to bed. Um, that will start that adrenaline going, that starts the mind racing as well. So watching something really fast and aggressive before bedtime is not a good thing. Now you've been told time and time again, you read it everywhere about turning off your, your telephone, turning off the laptop at least 30 minutes, if not an hour before bedtime, because these, this is a stimulating activity. The blue light that the um, laptop and the telephone emits is a stimulating light. Um, remember I've said about melatonin, we need that dark, it makes us go to sleep. The blue is actually stimulating and it doesn't allow the melatonin to, to kick in. So try and come away from that before you, you go to bed. Ideally an hour, but at least 30 minutes and start to, to wind down from that. The other activities are things like food and alcohol. These are stimulants. So if you're eating high sugary foods, um, or drinking lots of alcohol, or drinking coffee, um, or in, and even tea, they are stimulants. So you may find that you're actually waking up in the middle of the, the night, um, and if you've had something very sweet in the, before you've gone to bed, you are actually having a sugar rush. It's exactly the same as what happens to you during the day, that if you start the day on lots of sugar, you find in you're having that three, four o'clock in the afternoon slump, you're finding you're waking up about three, four o'clock and you just can't get to sleep. It could be that you've had too much sugar and you are actually having a bit of a sugar rush and then a sugar slump. Um, so another reason why you need to stay away from the stimulating um, foods, the, the, the alcohol, the coffee, the tea, and definitely um, anything that is too sugary. Um, start to, to wind down with something that is much gentler, something that um, like hot milk or hot oat milk, these are actually really good at helping you to um, relax. They contain something called tryptophan. Tryptophan is actually a precursor to serotonin. Um, so it has a knock-on effect. So it's a, a really good one to have. So back in, uh, your nan may have told you to, to have a hot drink, a hot um, milk before you go to, to bed. It's actually true um, and it will it will actually help to calm you down. Other foods that contain tryptophan are turkey, nuts and seeds and eggs and natural yogurt as well. These are really good foods that you could have um, also during, during the day, but not the stimulating ones before you go to bed. 
So prepare yourself for sleep. So one of those is obviously stopping these stimulating activities and stimulating foods, but also start to prepare yourself mentally. Turn the lights down in the house. So start to bring the lights down, start to make the room a bit darker, don't have bright lights on. So bring the lights down, that will also start to kick in the melatonin as well. And your brain starts to think you're getting ready for bed and then you will start to feel sleepy. Um, watch something nice and gentle uh, on the TV or turn the TV off and perhaps read as well. Start to wind down, change your clothing, take your, your clothes that you've had on all day and start to get ready for bed. Put your, your night clothes on, put something nice and loose on and make your, yourself feel comfortable. You will start to wind down. Another thing that you can actually do is have a, have a bath. Um, and a bath in something like Epsom salts. Epsom salts is very, very high in magnesium. Magnesium is a relaxant. We need magnesium to calm our muscles down. It also calms the mind down. So a bath with a big handful of Epsom salts is really good before you go to bed. Now, there has actually been some studies on that, and they say the optimum time for you to have a bath is actually 90 minutes before you go to, to, to bed. That's the time that we, your body will start to relax and, and calm down. So try that, Epsom salt bath. It also raises your blood temperature, which you do actually want, because when you go to bed, you're at a, a relaxed state and then the body starts to cool down ready for, for sleep. So that's another way of pre preparing yourself. So then prepare the bedroom. We actually term this as sleep hygiene, um, oh, sorry, bedroom hygiene. Um, and you are not only preparing yourself, you're preparing your, your room or ideally you should be preparing your room. And if, you can, if you've got uh, um, lights outside your window, if you live in an area that's brightly lit by street lights, you really want to lock those, those, that light out. And as I've said, the light is a stimulant. Um, that's what keeps you awake. Um, whereas the dark is actually bringing on the melatonin. So ideally you want to have some blackout curtains so you can't see the light. Take away the noise in, in the room as, as well. So you've got that ticking clock that is going all the time. You really want to take that noise out. Other lights as well, the computer, the phone, if you've got a bedside um, um, clock that's, that's lit up where you have got your TV and it's on standby and there's a light, there needs to be no light in there because these are all stimulants that your brain will start to pick up. Um, so start to prepare them and make sure it's, it's not hot. It, it, if it's too hot, you will find that you actually can't sleep. So the room needs to be a, not too cool. And yet the optimum temperature is about 16, 17 degrees. Um, that's why it's actually recommended you should have the window slightly ajar just to let some fresh air in. Um, so um, another thing is if you're using your bedroom at the moment as a workspace, the, the tip is if you can, if possible, actually take away all that look, resembles the office. So the room turns back into a bedroom. So if you have got your laptop and all your paperwork, tidy them up and just put them to one side rather than have them out so it's still looking like an office. Um, and equally, during the day, if you have got the room um, set up as an office, cover the bed so it doesn't look like a, a bed because psychologically, that you are seen as a, as a bed and as where you would sleep but it's also been an office and an office is what's causing some of that stimulation so during the day it's recommended cover that bed over so it doesn't look like your bed and when you've tidied up the room and it's no longer an office you take that cover off and it becomes your bed again there is an argument to say that a bedroom is really only for sleep and intimacy it shouldn't be used for anything else so trick your brain into thinking it's an office during the day and then it's back into the your bedroom at, at night so 
also it's not so easy now but if your pillow is really uncomfortable or your mattress is really uncomfortable or the the covers are, are not are scratchy or too slippery or what or they're too hot this will also have a huge effect on your your sleeping patterns as well so it's really important you're not only preparing yourself for sleep that you are preparing your room so as i said i emphasize the room really should be dark you want that melatonin to kick in and to make you sleep and to calm you down um, so there are some re relaxation techniques that you you can try um, so one is actually having a bath as i've already mentioned and you could try the epsom salts with the magnesium you can also try magnesium sprays you can can spray those on onto your 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 body um, to to help cut feel calm or you can use some aromatherapy oils lavender um, is one that is well known to be a relaxant it's not everybody's um, type of fragrance and and if it's not you could try something like frankincense now frankincense um, is actually also termed as the um, filing cabinet um, oil because what it does it calms the brain down and it makes the brain um, put things in some sort of order it stops that activity the mind going all the time so you could you could have a smell of that put it on the tissue put it next to um, your your pillow um, to, to help you you sleep um, you um, you can also try something like um, bark remedies, which um, there, there's one called rescue remedy, which is also very good at helping you calm down as well. You could take a couple of drops of that um, before bed and that can help you feel very, very calm um, and also start to to bring the mind down and to, to start to to calm them to calm the mind try some drinks i've already mentioned the hot milk um, and um, oat milk as, as as well with the tryptophan you can try some chamomile oil it's all quite calming but try not to have anything that's too diuretic like peppermint tea or fennel tea or normal coffee or tea these are diuretics and they they will actually encourage you to um, get up in the night as as well so um and that uh, so um, that's also something that will break the sleep pattern if you're having to get up um, regularly. Another relaxation technique um, is actually breathing, um, which sounds a bit crazy, um, but breathing techniques. Now there's lots and lots of breathing techniques out there. And if it's something that's very new to you, you can literally breathe in for four breaths, hold for four, and then release it very slowly through the mouth for four. So you're breathing through your nose um, for four. Hold for four. Breathe out for four. So breathe in for four counts, hold for four counts, breathe out for four counts. This will slow your breathing down very, very gradually. That's just one very, very easy relaxation technique that you you can do but there's lots of other breathing techniques that you you can do but that's a really good starting one just to listen to your breath feel your chest moving feel your abdomen moving and concentrating on on that rather than what's in your head start to concentrate on that breathing and hearing the breath so that's a another just nice and easy um to to try you can also listen to white noise or pink noise. Um, these are really easy things to download. You can get them on YouTube and download them or you can just play them on, on YouTube. Um, white noise is actually like a fan. So some people do have fans going in their room because of that noise. Um, and pink noise is more like um, rain. Um, and it's those new those noises it's the level um, that it, it runs at has a really really calming effect but have a look um, on YouTube have a look at the different noises and find one that you feel 
that could actually help you. But white noise and pink noise are the two that have been found to be really, really useful in helping people to get um, to sleep. So as much as we want quietness um, and peace in the bedroom, um, that's, that is peace away from stimulation. But these other noises, um, the frequency that they play at are a different frequency. They're a very low frequency. And that actually has an effect on the brain waves, and that starts to calm you down um, and can actually trigger you into to going to, to sleep. So have a try of those. Now the breaking habits. Now I've talked about getting up and going to the bathroom. Sometimes those can be habits, unless you have an underlying medical condition. Sometimes if you are getting up on a number of occasions, it can be a habit. Now, I mentioned one of my clients, um, or one of my clients in particular, she was actually getting up five or six times a night and discovered that it was actually a habit that she had. She is now down to once a night, um, but she changed all that she was doing she started to prepare herself she was using the laptop while she was sitting in bed she was drinking a cup of tea sitting in bed before she she went to sleep she changed all those habits and bit by bit she's now getting a four night sleep she's gone from four hours a night getting up five or six times she's now getting a good six seven and sometimes eight hours sleep sometimes getting up only once in the night but she managed to do it and she changed those, those um, habits. So it is about breaking habits. So it's not only the breaking habit of getting up in the night, because you'll find if you are getting up in the night, if you check the time, you'll probably find it's the same time every time you do it. And that's an indication that it's a habit. And the other habits that you're breaking are the things that I've mentioned before, trying to break those habits of, sitting up watching a film too late watching something too um stimulating having a glass of wine before you go to bed or having a coffee um even having a cigarette as well is still a stimulant um so trying to break those habits and bring in some new habits so so they are my top tips for hopefully getting a better night's sleep better quality sleep so have a go at those maybe start off with one don't try and do them all at once because that can be a little bit difficult but concentrate on one area and just then gradually start to to add some of the techniques um, and i hope that that starts to improve some of the sleep pattern so um if you want any more information, I do actually have a Facebook and an Instagram page at Neutrality, and you can see the, the spelling there. My website is actually under development, but you can contact it, me through Facebook or Instagram if you want any more information or you want to follow me and follow some of my hints and tips. But thank you for watching. Thank you for watching our lockdown learning. There will be more to come and I will hopefully be giving you some more tips on lots of wellness issues and um, nutrition. So thank you very much um, and thank you for watching.